Well, earlier this year, the Surgeon General called loneliness a public health crisis. And our guest this evening has a new resource to help us form solid relationships in our modern world. Regina Boyd is a Catholic licensed mental health counselor and marriage and family therapist, as well as the founder of Boyd Counseling Services. She's also a contributor to the Hallow app and has examined the intersection of mental health and Catholicism for national organizations, including the Catholic Campus Ministry Association, the Given Institute, and more. Her new book from Ave Maria Press is called Leaving Loneliness Behind, Five Keys to Experiencing God's Love and Building Healthy Connections with Others. Welcome to the Busted Halo Show, Regina Boyd. Thank you so much for having me. How are you? How are you? I mean, I, I feel like a good mental health professional. How are you? How are you, <laughs> how are you doing? That is like my number one question throughout the day <laughs> that I ask anyone. <laughs> and people say that all the time, but you know, you probably need to mean it in a different way in your work. <laughs> exactly. Tell me about you. What's going on? You Sometimes people misunderstand me. I'll say, how are you doing? And they tell me how their weekend went. And then I say, well, no, right. how are you really doing? <laughs> <laughs> how are you feeling? Now, right. if you, Regina, if you notice at any time during this interview, uh, my co-host Brett there in one of the Zoom squares from New Orleans, if he starts looking down, taking notes, it's because he's probably taking notes. <laughs> I would, because I am taking notes. Yeah. <laughs> that would be a good reason why it looks like that. It's funny. It's all these job interviews I've been doing, I've been kind of like subtly. I just tell them that I'm, I might be jotting some things down, you know. Nice. So I might nice. hear as well talking to a real professional <laughs> and one with the with the faith involved. So this is fascinating. I'm so glad you're on. Oh, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm, before we get to the specifics of your latest book, Regina, I'm uh, I'm curious to know, and I think our, our listeners would benefit from the work that you've done with some Catholic organizations that help people see where we have an appropriate intersection and overlap between mental health and the Catholic Church. What does that oftentimes look like when you're presenting to like a, a diocese or an organization like CCMA? Yeah, it just sort of depends on what they're wanting at the time. So sometimes people might want to talk about burnout for their ministry staff or things like that. Um, and then other times it's really more educational about about that intersection. You know, what does it mean when somebody is going to see a therapist? Does it mean I'm trusting God any less? Am I, you know, should I be only talking to my priest and those things? And at least what I'm here to say, I mean, you can take it for what it's worth. I'm, I'm not infallible, but at least my belief is that when we take care of our minds, of our bodies, we're being good stewards of our bodies and therefore really doing a spiritual work because we know in the catechism that it talks about that integration of body and soul. And so I really believe that you are doing something really beautiful and spiritual when you take care of yourself. So for you, Regina, as developing your career as a mental health professional and being as you are a marriage and family therapist, was it always kind of a parallel or at some point did you go, you know what, I really should integrate my faith or what I'm doing could be a great gift, gift to the Catholic Church? Or was it always just kind of run along parallel and you, you saw the, the connection there always for you? Yeah, part of the reason why I went to grad school was I was really motivated to help couples. Um, I've been influenced, as many people have been, by John Paul II's writings and teachings. And so I went to a secular graduate program thinking, you know, I'm going to save all these marriages and help keep build the building blocks of society together right. and, Good you know, you. rah, rah. And, um, you know, it's a beautiful work. I love working with couples. It's very touching. Um and so what I learned over the years was how to integrate that. I knew it was something I wanted to do. I just wasn't sure how to measure up that secular training with the faith. But even in uh, most counseling programs, I mean, there's so much language that's colorful, artistic, that's rich with um, similar beliefs. There's a lot of overlap to Catholicism, even though they might not outwardly express it. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, w what we hopefully have continued to build on for 2000 years is the fact that Jesus himself gathered people together and started creating community from the very beginning. And, uh, and that, and, and it's somewhat ironic or maybe something else, maybe it's not ironic, but that in our modern world, as people are being less and less involved in things like organized religion, there's also an epidemic, as some health officials have called, of loneliness. Uh, Regina, would you see that this was certainly uh, sparked or maybe fanned into flame by the global pandemic, the COVID-19 pandemic? Absolutely. The numbers were already rising with our young people through the you know, Pew Research and other research institutes, we were already seeing that increase among young people. So I think social media had a, a big part in that. 
and how people relate to it. But I think the pandemic just exacerbated that and left us feeling more isolated, less connected, even though we're connected in all these technological ways. Are we really forming those deep emotional bonds that help us feel supported and like we're grafted to a community? And therefore, while social media, and it in, by definition is somewhat social, and we use terms right. like friends and unfriends, it seems like one of the things that we're learning is not only is it not helping us create genuine relationships, it might actually be pushing us the other way. Yeah, especially, again, I think for our younger people, it depends how you're relating and interacting with people online. But I think it can sometimes be an isolating experience when we see the highlight reels of other people and we sort of have this introspective conversation with ourselves about, well, why aren't I doing that? Or why haven't I accomplished that myself? And so we can have these inner critical voices that sort of compound that fact. Whereas before we were all online and social media, you just lived your life and you didn't really know anybody's business until you <laughs> had a conversation with them. <laughs> um, and so it's kind of magnified, I think, with social media. You're sort of reminded about all of these things that are happening without you um, every time you log on. Because imagine back in the day, you don't even look like you're old enough to <laughs> remember this, Regina, I and maybe remember. my other two co-hosts or not either. But back in the day, you'd have to like be invited to somebody's house, standing in their kitchen, you know, pouring yourself a little punch and looking at the fridge with all the pictures of the kids' accomplishments before you could get to the point that you're talking about, which is like, oh boy, look at that. You got the trophies and the, it was in the soccer team and oh, this is pretty impressive here on your fridge. But now, I mean, that was a very small percentage of people could do that compare and despair. And now it's all too common. Absolutely. And I think with the pandemic in particular, we've sort of, and I think people have joked about it in ways like, oh, I don't know how to greet people anymore. How do I shake their hand? How do I, you know, do I say hello when I'm passing someone on the sidewalk or not? You know, I six feet Depends apart. Depends on the city. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> And That's so, not as easy as, as a question geographically <laughs> anymore, right? It's not. And so I think we have really been impacted, if we're being honest with ourselves, by this pandemic and how we relate to other people are sort of these social nuances that we've lost along the way or that have been changed because of the pandemic and therefore leaving us feeling more disconnected from our communities. Well, our guest this evening on the Busted Halo Show is Regina Boyd. She is the author of Leaving Loneliness Behind, Five Keys to Experiencing God's Love and Building Healthy Connections. One of your keys is actually right there in the title, Connections. And as you mentioned, we seem to be, like right now, I'm looking at a laptop screen and it's divided into four squares. Krista, upper left. Brett, lower left. Me, I look at me. Sometimes you can turn that off on Zoom. I like to look at me just in case I have, I don't know, I got something on my, you know, this, something on, on my teeth or whatever. <laughs> and then sugar I, see, on the I see Regina, lower right. So uh, theoretically, we're connected. Like the internet's working. We can hear each other and see each other. But uh, the kind of connections that are healthy for us and help us overcome loneliness are different types of connections. So that's one of your first keys, Regina, right? Connection? Absolutely. When we think about how God created the world. We're, we're made for connection, to be in relationships with others. We, we have a God who is a triune God and already existing in relationship. And so we were designed, he says, man should not be alone. And so we're designed to be together and not walking through this life um, so individualistically that we don't need anyone else. Now, I'm very grateful for our monastic um, brothers and sisters who do make that sacrifice. Um, but at the same time, all, we're, we have this innate need and in being the same way we need food, shelter, and clothing. We also need deep, authentic connection with people. And I do think you can develop authentic connections online, but it takes some relating. Are we sharing about our life? Are you journeying along with someone? and developing more intimate details about your life than you would a general acquaintance or something like that. And so we want to be paying attention to, is there genuineness and authenticity and a depth to the relationship? When you think about all of the levels of friendship, stranger, acquaintance, friend, family member, spouse, right? We have varying levels of intimacy with which we exchange that depth. And so if we have a few of those more solid bonds, that's really the authenticity that we're looking for. 
Regina Boyd is our guest on the Busted Halo Show. We're talking about her book, Leaving Loneliness Behind, Five Keys to Experiencing God's Love and Building Healthy Connections with Others. Right, now, Regina, you've studied loneliness and isolation ex extensively. We talked about some of the, the contributing factors like the pandemic and, and like social media. But was there anything that in your research was surprising to you? Just like as a, you know, oh boy, I'm glad I researched this because in my day-to-day -day life, I wouldn't have thought that this contributes to loneliness. One of the biggest things that surprised me was an, an effect of loneliness, that huh. how it affects our physical health is usually much more counteractive than smoking, than things that lead to diabetes. All of, If you combine all of the major health scares we have in our country, loneliness is actually at the top for causing people to have serious health issues. And that was really surprising to me because I don't think we realize the impact it has and how, and therefore how much more important it is for our survival. As far as causes to loneliness, one thing that I think is also surprising is you can have strong relationships with other people and still experience loneliness um, because I think we, there's always a longing for more in each of us that's built for that. We have that capacity that only God can fill. Um, and at the same time, we have the people around us where there's opportunities for God to love us and to be, to receive from those people around mm -hmm. us if they're disposed to that. Well, cause and you, so, even, you, yeah. you begin the book by describing somebody who seemingly has it all, you know, they've got a job, they got friends, they got family. And, uh, and what we don't know is what's going on underneath or behind the scenes or inside their heart that people can still be lonely, even if we don't sort of perceive that. Exactly. We've all had moments, and that's what I really wanted this book to be about, is we've all had moments where we've experienced loneliness. It could be anything from, <clears throat> excuse me, from you're in a leadership position, it's lonely at the top, you know, you're the last person in your social circle to get married, maybe you've been bullied as a child. We've all had these moments where we just pause and notice that sense of distance and disconnection. And even when we seem like we have it all together, that's we've all had that pang of loneliness. And so I think it's important to pay attention to that internal monologue and just do that check to make sure we have all of these five keys in place to, to help counteract some of that. The book is Leaving Loneliness Behind, Five Keys to Experiencing God's Love and Building Healthy Connections with Others. And we're speaking with Regina Boyd, who is a Catholic licensed mental health counselor and marriage and family therapist. Um, we'll let people buy the book to find out about all five of the keys. But one <laughs> that I was very keen to ask you about, because some of them you might say, like we talked about one of them is, is connection. Well, OK, that kind of makes sense. Let's have some more intimate relationships. Um, but I'm, I'm curious to hear you, you share a little bit more about one of your keys is communicating during conflict. Tell yes. us about that and why that's so important. So this is one of my favorite ones because okay, I'm glad I asked <laughs> um, we uh, people assume that conflict is bad for our relationship. If you're having a lot of fights or arguments, it means the relationship is unhealthy. And that's not necessarily true. Whenever two people are involved or more people are involved in a situation, you're going to have two unique, unrepeatable people Two, very, two different viewpoints. And that means inevitably there's gonna be a difference of opinion and that's okay. We're all created unique and beautiful. And so <laughs> the difference and the key is how do we navigate the conflict? Can we look at conflict as opportunities for growth to learn more about someone, to hear where they're coming from? So when you're having that disagreement and kind of being like, I don't really agree with you. I don't know, like you sound kind of crazy. I'm not on, on board with that. Can I be in a disposition of openness and say, wow, this is an opportunity for me to get to know you better and find out why you hold that belief for that position? Why is this so important to you? And when I learn that, then I'm able to help us come to a better solution that we can agree on together if I have more understanding about the other person. And so if you, instead of getting caught up in, oh no, we had another conflict, we had an argument, that's not as big of a deal as it is how do, what do we do when it comes up and how do we handle it? And that's probably a bigger issue for some because almost everyone is to some degree conflict averse. Yes. Um, maybe nobody like, I mean, maybe there's a few people that wake up in the morning and go, I can't wait to kind of tussle. Or you, <laughs> we've all been with some families around the dinner table where some guest comes in and whether it's a, a particular 
you know, family trade or uh, a region, like if you're from Brooklyn or some ethnicity where you <laughs> sit down at the table and go, oh my gosh, this is horrible. All they want to do is fight. And they're having the best time. This is what they love to do. They sit down at dinner and the dad <laughs> throws out some topic. What do you think about Palestine? Whoa, oh my gosh. Oh no, let's not <laughs> talk about that. So, but I mean, I think there are certainly, I would imagine, and you're the, you're the professional, so I'll defer to you, but there are some people that are even more conflict averse and the need to be liked is higher and so oftentimes they're they're doing a lot of, of extra effort to kind of not engage in any conflict and what i hear you saying is that that can just push us more into isolation and loneliness absolutely it's counterintuitive you have to be willing to kind of push yourself and wait in there a little more and we've all done it i've done that shrinking away to sort of preserve and protect um, but when we wade into that discomfort, I mean, we've all we all have stories of coming through a conflict successfully of, you know, whether it's childhood friends, college friends, whoever along your way where you've had that disagreement and overcome it. And it still has kept your relationship intact and maybe even made it stronger. And so when we're willing to go there, it can be a, quite a beautiful, transformative experience. Catholic mental health counselor and marriage and family therapist Regina Boyd is our guest here on the Busted Halo Show. And Regina, like seconds after you flipped on your mic, you said, I'm a big fan of JP2. Now, this is apparent <laughs> if anyone is even flipping through the table of contents of your book, <laughs> Leaving Loneliness Behind, because your number five key is a big buzzword from the theology of the body, one of uh, John Paul II's major contributions to Catholic life and relationships. And key number five is self-gift. Tell us what the, what that is in John Paul II's lingo and why you see it as such a, such a key here to overcoming loneliness. Yes, that famous quote that man cannot find himself without making a sincere gift of himself. And it's that curious paradox that when I love, when I stretch and just give a little more than I'm comfortable with, we seem to receive back a hundredfold all the time. And, you know, especially if we're in a, assuming it's a healthy situation and somebody not taking advantage, but um, when we have those opportunities to really die to self and give it makes the relationship so much better. And I think marriage is a good example, an easy example for that one. Um, people always say, you know, marriage isn't 50-50, it's 100-100. And I believe in that 100%, but also trusting that your spouse has your back in that situation. Instead of me being angry and seeing the trash left there and thinking, well, that's his job. Why hasn't he taken the trash out again? You know, grumbling. Right. If I see it there, it's bothering me. I'm going to take it out, right? <laughs> like, just take it out and it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> and I can make a gift to myself and trusting that there are probably 10 other things that he's done that I have neglected that were unnoticed to me that he is also has my back in that way. And so when we are able to take that time and sort of counterintuitively die to self, which is hard in our U.S. culture, um, it really produces so much fruit in our relationships. Regina Boyd, during our interview, as we uh, mentioned before, I did notice a couple of times Brett Sedell, newly minted MSW, taking some notes. But I think <laughs> yeah. I, as just there at the end, I saw him not taking notes about how he could be a good therapist, but how he might call you up if uh, he's uh, he's also a newlywed. That's, that's oh. the other issue. <laughs> you know, it's even funnier than that. I thought what you were going to call me out for is that she mentioned taking the trash out. I actually wrote the word trash down because I do need to take that out tonight. So... <laughs> Not only are we talking long-term help here, she's you all are helping me with my nope. short-term relationship <laughs> goals. Because <laughs> I'm going to a big football game without my wife this weekend. I got to take the trash out before I go. My goodness, <laughs> the least I could do. <laughs> my goodness. I'm so glad I was able I to yeah. save your marriage. It's such a classic, you about that. <laughs> classic sitcom marriage issue, and yet still right. I have to write it on my hand for after the show. <laughs> he wrote this on his hand. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, uh, questions abound. But uh, the big, the biggie I would have is that um, I'm feeling – I just got my MSW, and I just passed my boards here in Louisiana. So Congratulations. I'm Thank you. I'm a <laughs> I got my LMSW. I'm thrilled. It's great. A licensed master of social work. And yet, at the same time, I'm literally on hour zero of being a social worker. So it sounds better, I think, in its terminology. I feel confident in one side of me and quite vulnerable and um, intimidated even by starting out on the other. Any tips for kind of a, a starting off counselor who has the best of intentions but is just feeling a little intimidated at the beginning? 
Yeah, absolutely. I think we all feel intimidated in the beginning. So you're not alone in that. I would say stick to a supervisor that you really kind of trust and to guide you find a good trusted supervisor and maybe even dabble a little bit in work that feels challenging to you, intimidating, or maybe something you would never want to do. And that is a nice throw you in the deep end kind of opportunity (laughs) to realize that you're probably more capable than you think you are. Oh, oh, I see. I was glad you finished that sentence. I thought you were just going (laughs) to stop. Just do the hardest thing. Do the hard things. No, you're right. Because that it's funny you say that because I've asked that of of a past supervisor at an internship. And he's like, you are you're you're you are where you're supposed to be. Like, you don't need to know it all yet. And he's been doing it for 20 years and he doesn't know it all yet. So. You try and, like you're saying, challenge yourself. You'll figure out you actually know more than you think, and you're going to learn as you do the hard stuff. So I really appreciate that. Absolutely, yeah. I mean, you have the training. You have the knowledge. So it's just going out there and seeing what happens, you know? It just seems like so much on the line, you know? And this is just a my own overthinking. It's like somebody's mental health, you know? I, I, I'm like, do I, do I just say the wrong? Even though I'm trained know, and I'm ready right. to go, it's like, I, you know, it seems like there's so much more weightiness to this. Um that I think that adds to the intimidation, but you know, the faith aspect helps, which is nice. Yeah. One thing that really helped me to, in regards to that, of the weight of it all is reminding myself that, you know, everyone that I work with is a child of God and he's got it under control. So I'm with this person for this one hour and then God's got the rest of the 23 hours of the day, you know, <laughs> six other days of the week. Rest of the week. <laughs> right. And he is, right? he's and, more trained than me. You're right. Yeah. Right. <laughs> And really, they have the rest of the week. They go and live their lives yeah, without right. me. You know, it's, I'm just there for one hour. And so um, really trusting God, you know, and them to take care of the rest. Great. Thank you. So, uh, Christina. Also, are you, you hiring? Cr- cr- yeah. <laughs> I have to use every opportunity for the day. <laughs> yeah, Krista, if you could book yeah. some more guests, that'll be helpful for Brett and his uh... <laughs> my counseling career and getting a job. <laughs> I, I, might, I might be able to help you with that. I might. Oh, be able to... look at I that. Look at that. <laughs> She's got ideas. She's got ideas. Yeah. Well, I'm already on your website. I, I'm about to press contact, but I already have one through Krista, <laughs> the producer. So that's true. Good. Well, Regina Boyd, thank you not only for uh, giving Brett a few tips, but also, I think, exposing us to this very important territory of loneliness and what might be a certainly a Catholic perspective on remedy for what has been called a public health crisis that we're experiencing in the 21st century. So the book is called Leaving Loneliness Behind, Five Keys to Experiencing God's Love and Building Healthy Connections with Others. We'll put a link to that on our radio blog so you can see where you can pick it up from Ave Maria Press. That's bustedhalo.com slash radio. And Regina Boyd, thanks so much for spending some time with us. Thank you so much for having me. It was fun.